Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. Now, perfect cheese puffs. Are you intimidated to make them because in the past they've turned out like this where they're collapsed and soggy? Well, today I'm gonna to share with you a foolproof formula for perfect cheese puffs, and I'm sure you're gonna love this recipe. Now, to make the dough, and the dough is called pâte à choux. Pâte à choux means, choux actually means cabbage, and that's what these cheese puffs, or gougères as they're called in French, look like when they're finally baked. You need to actually cook the dough. So in a small saucepan here, I have a half a cup of water, just regular water, and to that I'm going to add a half a stick of butter. So that's four tablespoons of unsalted butter, and that goes right into your water. You wanna turn this on a medium heat and melt together the butter and the water. Now, in addition to this water and butter, you're going to need a half a cup of flour, which I have measured out here. You're gonna need a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar. Sugar adds just a hint of sweetness that really complements the saltiness of the cheese that we're going to add into the cheese puffs or gougere. So we're gonna just melt the butter into the water here, which is almost completely melted. And now to this, I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt. This is coarse kosher salt here. And a quarter teaspoon of sugar. So dissolve those two ingredients into this mixture. And now I'm going to add a half cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to cook this mixture over medium heat. You wanna bring this together, bring the dough together. And you're gonna cook this in the pan here until the dough creates a ball of sorts and a film forms on the bottom of the pan. And that's gonna take anywhere from three to four minutes. Now, pâte is a very unique dough that is cooked twice, once over the stove top here, and then we're going to add the eggs to it, and then we're gonna cook it again in the oven. Now, pâte is used to make more than just cheese puffs as I'm making today. You can make um, profiteroles, which are the sweet version of the cheese puff that's filled with all sorts of wonderful fillings. You can make eclairs with this dough as well. We're looking pretty good here. The dough is starting to come together and it's forming a film on the bottom of the pan, which you can see. This looks good. I'm gonna turn the heat off and now I'm going to transfer this mixture to a stand mixer here with a paddle attachment. Now, you could certainly do this by hand if you wanted to. That's the old fashioned way, but these stand mixers are really great here. So I'm gonna let this mixture cool slightly with the paddle going for maybe a minute or so. And then I'm gonna add the eggs. So I have two whole eggs here. I'm just gonna crack them. Now, as always, guys, when you're cracking eggs, crack the egg on a flat surface. You're less likely to get shells up in the egg if you crack on a flat surface as opposed to the side of the bowl. And these are room temperature eggs. You wanna use room temperature eggs here because you don't wanna cool this mixture down too, too much. So now I'm gonna turn the speed up slightly and I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time here. Now the eggs are really the main and only leavening agent in this dough that creates the loft and height of these cheese puffs. So the reason why you're doing it, you wanna incorporate it one at a time here. The dough itself will start to break apart and you almost, you might think, oh my gosh, I've ruined the dough. It's all broken um, and separated, but after a minute, this will come back together and that's when you know to add the second egg. So the dough has stiffened up slightly. It looks cohesive and now I'm gonna add the second egg. Again, you're gonna have to mix this for about a minute until it comes back together and forms a dough again. Now what you're looking for here is a nice stringy dough almost, so it should have some elasticity to it. So the dough has come back together. It's been about a minute here, guys. And really what you're looking for is the dough to be slightly stringy and to really hold a peak. So you should be able to pull the beater up and it should kind of string out. The dough should string out slightly and hold a really kind of soft peak. And that's when you know that this is ready. Now I'm going to reattach this and add the main ingredient here, and that is the cheese. So I'm using a quarter cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese here. And 
One trick or secret in making these cheese puffs is that you want to use in the batter itself an aged cheese, something that doesn't have a lot of moisture in it because excess moisture in this dough is going to only encourage these cheese puffs to collapse during the baking process. You could also use a pecorino, maybe even a cloth bound cheddar or an extra sharp cheddar, something that's been aged a long time, that would work in this as well. Now, in addition to this Parmesan cheese, I'm also going to use a little bit of Gruyere cheese on top, but we're not putting the Gruyere in the filling, we're putting it on top because again, a high moisture cheese is going to encourage these guys to collapse. So this looks good. I mean, that was simple enough, right? Not a hard dough to make at all. Transfer this dough into a pastry bag that's fitted with a half inch round tip. Now this dough, what's really great about it is it kind of has a formula to it where it's a half a cup of water, a half a stick of butter, and a half a cup of flour. And you could easily scale this up and make more if you'd like. And then I'm going to transfer this into the bag here. You can see it's stringy and elastic, and this is really going to make a nice, lofty, hollow, light, and airy cheese puff. In addition to the cheese that I've added, you could also flavor this with a little bit of cayenne, or if you like black pepper, that would be really fantastic here as well. So now we're ready to pipe our cheese puffs. So all you need is a parchment-lined cookie sheet. And one little trick here, a little tip for you guys, whenever you're working with um, sticky doughs or you're piping sticky doughs or batters um, like this, if you take a little bit of dough and you stick it to the four corners of the pan, when you go to pipe this sticky batter onto the parchment, it won't lift up. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pipe one inch round circles, and this batter here will make about 30 cheese puffs. So when you're piping, you're going to press or apply pressure to the back end of the bag here, forcing the dough out until you get to an inch. And an inch isn't really that big. You're looking for maybe a slightly bigger round um, than a quarter. And you're going to take the bag, you're gonna push down and swirl the tip, and you should get a nice little mound of dough. I'll show you again. So you're gonna pipe, apply pressure. You're gonna stop applying pressure. You're gonna push the tip down into the dough itself and swirl the tip. And you should get nice, even, uniform coins or mounds of this pate choux dough. And these will expand, they'll double in size, so you wanna give a little bit of space in between each of these. And make sure your oven is preheated to 400 degrees. These are going to bake to start at 400 degrees, and then you're gonna reduce the temperature down to 350 degrees. Now one trick here, guys, is that when you put these in the oven, you don't want to open the door while they're baking. If you open the door while they're baking, it's going to collapse your cream puffs because really what you're looking to do is create a shell or structure. So giving the cream puff enough time to create a crust and structure. But if you open the door before it creates that crust, it's going to collapse because the walls or the shell itself hasn't formed. All right. This looks good here, guys. Now, if you have any little tips, you see these little peaks that I've created here, take a little bit of water and put it on your finger and dab down the tip here because during the baking process, you don't want that to burn and you want these to be nice and round. And now to top these, I'm going to brush them lightly with a little bit of egg yolk. Egg yolk here is gonna give a nice, dark, rich color to the top of your cheese puffs, your gougere. There we go, nicely brushed with our egg yolk. And now I have three quarters of a cup of Gruyere cheese and this is gonna go on top. It's about a half a teaspoon per cheese puff here. And you wanna pinch the cheese slightly and place them over the top. And this cheese topping here creates a wonderful crust. All right, these look great. So these go into your 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. Then you're gonna reduce the oven temperature to 350 degrees for about another 20 to 25 minutes. Now you don't wanna open the oven while they're baking. Again, that will encourage them to collapse. So look at them through the oven window.
So our cheese puffs are out of the oven. They're still nice and warm and you wanna get them to your guests as soon as possible because these are best enjoyed nice and warm. Now, they're not as intimidating as you might have thought, right? And I just wanna break one open for you so you can see how light and airy they are. They smell fantastic. They taste even better. I encourage you to try this recipe and follow all of the tricks, tips, and steps along the way, and you will have cheese puff or gougere success. Reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. Love to hear from you guys. Enjoy. Enjoy.